Oh, you're making it more complicated. It was actually saying, pick me, daddy, pick me. <laughs> Mr. Wonderful knows what he's doing. No. I speak watch. The watches actually communicate with me. All right, everybody. Teddy Baldessar here, joined by Kevin. We have another shopping episode. We're going to be putting you to the test, go one-on-one. -on -one. But before we jump in, could you explain where we're at right now? So this is Watches of Switzerland. They are in the ilk that does great work creating an experience. Now, if you look at this boutique, it's just oozing horror culture. It's got every brand you want to look at and, and, and examine and be beside. But in addition to that, it respects all of them almost equally. Mm -hmm. So they're not making a decision for you. It's your opportunity to come in here and say, all right, let's look at IWC. Let's look at Ulysses Nardin. If you're going to shop for a watch, this is the place to come. And that's why we're here, Teddy. We are going to be exploring new dials, new ideas. We're going to be doing a shopping episode, five watches each. We'll go back and forth. But what I also want to do is create categories. So we're going to do a dress watch, a dive watch. Oh, you're making it more complicated. Making it a little more complicated, but I have to put restraints around you. Yeah, you're I a wild person. Teddy, let's face it. We start right now. I'm going to kick your butt on this for sure. Like I do every single time we do this. It just happens this way. It's yeah. because I'm an experienced collector and I'm teaching Teddy the ways of watches. That's how it works. He's the grasshopper here. His ego gets bigger each and every time we do this. <laughs> we need to put a stop to this. That is my PSA warning. But what we're going to be doing, okay. we'll flip the coin. You yes. know how this goes. So yeah. if you win, you have I'll the opportunity. I'll let you flip it. I'll call it this time. You'll call it? Okay. Yeah. And if you win, you have the opportunity to go to the store first, or we can do the swap. The only deal here with the swap is you can only swap for the category that we're, uh, is also on the other side. So, so not can, the piece, just the category. You have to, you so can, well, you can, do the piece, no, you can do the piece, but yeah. it has to be that category. So one of the categories is the beater. You can't right. just take your best uh, piece and then throw the beater as the alternative. So I have to fit I, I, that category. Oh, that, uh, that's fair, that's fair, but I'll still kick your butt. Go ahead, flip it. Ego's getting bigger as we go. Let's go. What do we, we got? Yep. Tails. Heads. Ooh, doesn't matter. Outcome won't change. I'm stealing. Or I'm at least giving me that option. So Kevin, Take the store first. So let's start with dive watch. Okay, sure. Pick out a dive watch. One thing I will say about dive watches in popular culture and fashion right now, the dive watch has transcended just the sport jean t-shirt look right into a tuxedo. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of that had to do with what Omega did with James Bond. Absolutely, I totally mean, agree. And so, and it, but it's really swept the industry. So most brands, maybe not Patek Philippe, but Many are saying, I have to be in this category, and they're getting very creative on their dials. So it's a great category to start with, Teddy. So where are you going? Well, you mentioned Omega. Are you going to go there? Mm, I, was thinking, I was thinking that these guys have really upped their game in the last two years. Here's Speedmaster. Speedmaster, I mean, which is a classic. So here we go. We I'm got going first. Seamaster collection here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. One way to just kick your ass is pick the winners each time, because if I'm going to pick first. Right now, the Omega 007 is smoking hot. Mm -hmm. And here they've gone for that elegant James Bond look with a black dial on gold. I mean, it just sticks out as a classic piece already. It's going to look good on me in a black suit, you know, white shirt, black tie. So you're going for that Seamaster Diver 300 two-tone, black dial, and then Okay. Yeah, it. absolutely. Okay. That's that's. Gonna be your pick. I mean, I can't. I walked right over and it just spoke to me. It was okay. actually saying, "Pick me, Daddy. Pick me." <laughs> that's what happened. I love it. I mean, right, it's, let's it's pull just, it out. Let's pull it out. Let's all get right. It. The great yeah. thing is, you get great value with Omega. You do. Great, great you value. Do. You absolutely do. And that watch, I would say, is like the gateway in many aspects to a luxury dive watch. It, it really sets it up so yeah. well. And it's not the most complicated in terms of the dial. It doesn't have as many complications as other offerings, but. The look is spectacular. And the, yeah, the laser engraved wave dials, yeah. it's fantastic. I looked at this piece just last week. I think it's spectacular. Look, that, I'm right out of the gate, 100% ahead of Teddy. It's that easy. I just pick a winner like this, boom, he's all really in the dust. He's in the dust. Don't listen to any of this. <laughs> Next. He fluffs this up every single time, and people fall for it. Don't fall for this. You know, it's a sweet talker. Listen, Don't fall for it. Just watch this play out, so to speak, or no pun intended, in the end, I will be kicking his butt again. I can't help say it enough. All right, let's go. Isn't it a shame when something's right underneath someone's nose and they just miss it? Really? What are you thinking? When you're going with the Bond, yeah. go for No Time to Die. I'm yeah. going to do that. I think that's the better watch. Titanium, you're talking about the Bond connection. I think it's just. I'm I all about I the dial. You. No, not, no, no. I'm you. all about the dial. I'm all about the look. That's sort of, to me, when you're a teenager, you know, 
inspire to grow into a real collector. Then you move to something that just blows you away from 10 feet. It's interesting, it's nice, it's a well-known piece. It's very collectible, but just doesn't have See how lightweight that is, come on. Yeah. Do yeah. me a favor. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-oh. I'm gonna give it uh, 7.2 versus a 9.8. Let's just look at those together, ready? You'll agree with me on this. Nice, interesting, also a great Omega, and on brand for Bond, but come on, kiddies, look at that. Mr. Wonderful knows what he's doing. No. This is a man coming face to face with defeat and trying to <laughs> figure out how he can navigate around it. All, All right. right, so next let's go to Dress Watch. Dress oh, Watch. Oh, Dress Watch. I've got this magnetic feeling. These are classics. Classics. The Reverso is such a classic piece. And we have one right over here. Okay. You, you think know, in Reverso? I mean, there's also some other great pieces. There, there are, but I haven't decided yet because in my collection, I got a reversal a long, long time ago. Which one are you looking at? Yeah, I'm looking at this over here. So that's the calendar chrono? That's yes. the master control calendar chronograph? Yes. Yeah. Let's it's have, a great watch. Let's have a look at okay. it. Let's yeah. have a look at that. And are we going to get a price on this one? Yes, you are. This one is 30000 30000 A little more pricey, but... You are getting calendar function yeah. with a chronograph, precious metal from, I would say, one of the greatest brands in watchmaking. And yeah. I think Richemont's potentially their best brand in terms of positioning. It's taken a while for the North American palette to like this piece, and that's what's happened. And it's slowly moving up the feeding chain because it's so well established in mm -hmm. Europe. It's, it's a must have piece for collectors over there, or, or a brand I should say. And then they've come up with some very interesting dials. This is one of them. It's um, beautiful. Yeah, I like it a lot. It fits the dress watch category. Easy for me to adapt a red band to this, not a problem whatsoever. So yes, that's gonna be my choice mm. for dress. Okay, that was tough. That was a, that was a good pick. I, I will give credit that, where it's due. Listen, these, I've come to the stage in my collecting, Teddy, where the watches actually jump out and say, pick me, pick me. That's how it works. All right, well, all right, my turn, my turn. All right, I'm gonna just look at Cartier first. I just wanna see if there's something in there. And if not, I'll keep looking. A great brand that I associate more with jewelry. Yes, they do make some fabulous watches. Though. They do, I mean, it. And they have know, history they, to go along with it. The Santos is, I mean, I think you could make it a dress watch, but it's also, you know, it's capable. I don't. That's, let's a pretty, that's, that's a pretty big dial for your wrist. It is. I think it's a little too large. That's, so that's the, uh, that's the larger version. So and there's a medium. Really so yeah, no, I, I don't think I can do it. I don't think I can do it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go downstairs. I'm gonna go downstairs. Well, once again, you're choosing wisely, but there's nothing wrong with this brand. No, right? absolutely not. It's just what's in. If there was like a Cartier Tank Louis in here, I would take a look and if it fit my wrist. But yeah. That's I think I have to go downstairs. I'm gonna check downstairs. Okay, let's go. Kevin made a good pick. I'll give it to him. He made a good pick. Let's see here. <laughs> I feel like this will be my lane, something. So you're going to go older. in pre-owned? I think so. OK. So you're going across multi-brands in the pre-owned space mm -hmm. here. You can go to Rolex here, right? You can go to, to Rolex. Patek. Ooh, there's some. Yeah, look at that. How about that old Calatrava right there? That is a classic. Let's do that. You pushed me into a corner. Yeah. There was nothing contemporary upstairs from a dress perspective that I saw that could really compete with you, so I think you go for the epitome of class here. What's the price, price, what's the on, price that? on that? 19,800. 19, 19, so I did even, I got Patek Philippe and I saved 10 grand. Yeah, that's interesting, but so. we're not even worried about But you are getting high complications. Yeah, we're not, we're not getting. Not worried about price. We're not, we're not worried about price on this competition. So the next that's category, beautiful. now you already picked a chronograph, yeah. so you have either a chronograph or GMT. So you could do either or. I'm gonna go GMT. Okay. I may go pre-owned in Rolex, where Ooh. we're really, um, and I haven't seen one yet, but let's look. Oh, no, there's some GMTs here. There's some GMTs? Okay. Let's have a look at that one. Okay. That, that gold is really off the charts. What are your thoughts on Oyster versus Jubilee bracelet? Do you like the finer link bracelet versus the... You, know, you may be surprised. I like Jubilee. I do too. Yeah. I agree with you. I there's think it so, so, so good much the criticism on that bracelet that over time it gets loose mm -hmm. and you have to worry about it. But people keep coming back to it all the time. You know, this has a beautiful patina to it. I don't like to polish watches. I prefer that one has, not doesn't to. seem to be polished. So I think no, yeah. I don't mind cleaning them. But uh, so that's my choice. Price on this? Did we say that? All? This one, Kevin, is fifty-five thousand. Fifty-five thousand smackaroos. Mm. You know, that's that just shows you over time the appreciation of this brand. 
That was not a fifty-five thousand dollar watch in nineteen eighty-three. Oh, heck, no. not quite. <laughs> so you know you can't go wrong buying Rolex. That's one of the rules of, the, of engagement and one of the classic pillars of any collecting. But in the case of a GMT, gorgeous. I got this feeling already. Uh, I've kicked. His, you I mean, know, you're spending I, a lot of money too. I mean, it's not part of the rules, but I mean, you can't control your I'm wallet. I'm feeling ever. bad for you, Teddy. Feeling okay. very, very bad at this okay. point. Oh, Grand Seiko. Yeah. They have some good GMTs. They have some great GMTs. What a remarkable brand in terms of what's happened. One that's striking now, this green dial. Yeah. It's a high beat. Well, which is fantastic. Yeah. That's, it's more than green. It's got some kind of texture going on with yellow stripes yeah. in there. I'm gonna, I'm, I think, let me, yeah, I think that one. You think you know the reference, right? This is the SBGJ259. You are right, yeah. Um, <laughs> Teddy knows his Grand oh. Seikos, oh. that's for sure. So the high beats, this is the... 36,000 vibration per hour movement. So you're going after it for the dial. I, I mean, the dial, I mean, look at that. That you know, thing it, just pops. I mean, that, that really, I'm not gonna compete with the classic of your Rolex. I have to almost go in the you know, I, I complete opposite you direction. But you know, you can see how, how that shifts. There's almost a mirroring effect on those yellow stripes coming down the green. It's really spectacular. These guys are known for their polishing. These cases are remarkable. Mm -hmm. The reflections are undistorted. It's really, really incredible. I have many Grand Seikos because this is one of the greatest values in watch collecting, period. You've made a wide choice, there, I have to admit. Still won't get him to win it, but it's better, some than money was, too. better than he was five minutes ago. So now the next watch here is a beater. Teddy, you can't just say beater. You have to explain to everybody what a beater is. So this is a watch that can't be a large portion of the total sum of your collection. It's a watch that you wear when you don't want to necessarily have to worry about banging it up. You want it to be probably a little bit lower cost relative to the rest of your collection. Usually will have good water resistance. Uh, it's robust. It can handle a beating. It's your beater. So you can't be spending $50,000 here, Kevin. I know that's right. hard for you, but you can't do it. So I'll tell you what I think a beater is oh boy. and why it's important. Um, I travel all over the world. There are certain cities where I can take out a really high-end piece and wear it Abu Dhabi, for example, mm -hmm. safest city on earth, seven years in a row. I wear extremely um, beautiful out of my deepest collection and I walk around at night, no problem. San Francisco, no. Los Angeles, no. New York is sort of right on the fringe, but there's been a lot of theft of time That's pieces. true as well. San Francisco's a war zone, so I'm gonna walk out at night with a beater on, even though I may have in the vault some great pieces that I'll go out to a function at mm -hmm. with. But Beaters are important in a collection. You want to have a timepiece on your wrist, but if somebody comes up to you and says, look, your life for your watch, you want to give them the beater for his collection or her collection. And this is all relative. We don't have a collection, or we don't have a store that's going to have $50 watches in it. So our you know, no, beater is going to be higher end, of course. Yeah, I think in this case, in watches of Switzerland, if I could get something under $5,000 uh, that is a great piece, even under $2,000, I'd be very, very happy. Mm -hmm. And I know they're going to have something because they want to really appeal to everybody. Mm -hmm. The whole idea of watch collecting is bring people in when they're young and they can afford it. And I always say, do not ever take on debt to buy a watch. You buy what you can afford all through these times of your life. And that's how you start if you want to be a collector. Am I right about that? I, I totally agree with you. Yeah. I think upstairs is a place to go. So all right, let's go. Let's, let's, let's go lead. to Beaterland. We passed Oris over here. Why okay, don't we go, go back, back there? Why don't we go back there? I mean, these are beautiful pieces, very affordable. I don't have one in my collection yet. I must say they've done a masterful job on the dials. Oh my goodness, there's a lot of good stuff in here. So, I, But I'm going to choose based on dial here. Yep. I'm, I'm, I'm agnostic sort of movement because, I mean, Oris has obviously been a brand that's done well of late, represented here, that's important, and they've got a huge selection. I am moving uh, over, right back over here mm -hmm. to this topish. Oh. You picked, you picked my favorite watch in yeah. the case. That is and, the yeah. Oris Big Crown Pointer Date Roberto Clemente edition. It's Probably beautiful. not a baseball fan, yeah. but this is based off of Hall of Famer for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Great humanitarian. It, it, that Puerto color Rico. has crept into some very high-end brands of late. Mm -hmm. Really high-end brands. I don't want to, but we want to stay on Oris, but I'm telling you, you can find that in fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars watches now. So, and you, know, you know what I'm talking about, Mr. Patek Philippe. <laughs> oh, I didn't want to say that, but. It's a beautiful watch. Yeah, let's, okay. let's pull that out. I mean, I'd be proud to wear that anywhere. That's it, it's, a, it's a fantastic watch. Yeah. And it's limited as well. Oh, right. you know, yeah. I didn't even know that, but mm -hmm. now I'm, I'm, the dial spoke to me and it's, it's beautiful. So, and also this is based off of a baseball player. So you can kind of see this is emulating a baseball mitt. Yeah. The strap, you have a nice it little case It does, back. they've done a great job yep. with that. I will and be putting see, a red band on this, obviously. You are correct. I was right on it, nice, mm -hmm. all right. 
I, I love this watch. Under two thousand. Under two thousand dollars. I think that's a great pick. It is a great pick. What a oh, there you have it. You have the whole legacy thing on the baseball player in the back. That's really gorgeous. Everybody is learning a little bit more about Oris. It's, it's, it's sort of, yes, it's a beater, but it's also very stylish. It's a fantastic it's, it's, it's watch. steel case. It's a fantastic watch. Yeah. Don't get caught up in the term beater. I know it's, some people say it's like a derogatory term, but... I don't consider yeah. it derogatory. I don't I, either. I, I call it safety. You need beaters in your collection mm -hmm. for obvious reasons. Plus, if I'm going out on a bike ride or mm -hmm. something, and I live in Miami, I always take a beater with me on the bike because I'm going to go nine miles. Mm -hmm. What if I fall? Sure. You can't, you, can't, you know, you got to be very, you got to think about your collection that you way. You, you have do. to think about it. Okay. All right, so what, are you, what are you gonna do? So there is actually one brand here that is only here. I don't think they're in any other door in the United States. So I, I feel like this is the appropriate time to look at them. I know that we have not looked at them. Doxa. Doxa, I've never think? even heard of Doxa. So they're a Swiss brand. Okay. They are very much known for their dive watches. So primarily it's the sub 300. How long has it been around in Switzerland? 1889. You've gotta be kidding. So, but this they, is the thing about watches in Switzerland. They find these brands, they bring them domestically, they showcase them. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Otherwise, I as a collector would have never looked at this. They're known for their eye-catching dials. Now, the professional orange dial is the one that they're known for, and the whole story behind it goes, I think it was Lake Neuchâtel, where they were testing out visibility underwater for dive watches. And the orange was the one that was the most eye-catching, the most easy uh, for visibility underwater. So I've swum in that lake. It's really cold. I, I've been right by it. I've never been dipped in It's very, color. very cold. Very, very cold. But, but so you could go for a classic 300. You could go for now. These are their more kind of contemporary quartz watches. Mechanical, are they, are they, mechanical, mechanical. Okay. And they start around a thousand dollars. Any automatics? All automatics. Here. Wow. That's what we're looking at. Wow. 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 Some of them with COSC certifications as well. So I mean, you're you're getting a lot of value with this brand. I might just do Doxa Sub 200 orange on that rubber strap. I think it's pretty pretty cool. Yeah, that's definitely. Uh... The yellow doesn't appeal to you? That's pretty funny. The orange too. is the classic. That's yeah. the classic so if Doxa. If you're going to get your first Doxa, get the orange. I, I agree. I think that makes is the sense way to, go. to me because I, I just, you know, this is the great thing about hanging around with Teddy. No matter where we go, I learn a little bit about the really low end entry level points, and then, which is good, and then I teach him about the granddaddy pieces, the stuff everybody wants to own. It's a good combination. We're learning together here. I didn't know anything about Doxa, now I do, and I have to admit, I like what he's choosing. Sub 200. Saving money again. If that's great, but that's not the objective here. That's true. You want the best styles, you want the best collection, and I think I'm still kicking your butt. Although I, I have to admit, the last couple of pieces, not that I'm getting worried, but they're, you're way better off than you were at the beginning of this contest. Mm -hmm. well, that looks even better out of the case. Come on, you gotta admit. Goodness, mm -hmm. that really pops. That's kind of cool. Doxa. It's pretty fun, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's very interesting. Jacques Cousteau's watch. Yes. Really? So Jacques yes. Cousteau, his whole crew, a lot of them were wearing Doxa watches. Well, we should, obviously there's a legacy opportunity yes. in advertising and social media yes. in that because everybody remembers that brand associated with the ocean. Really? Because they must have gone with some heavy, because they went way down, those guys. They did, and they've been resurged, new ownership. Yeah, beautiful. Well, those are two great pieces. Fantastic. That's strong. That is very strong. Yeah. Good relative. I think we're really killing it in the beater category. I, I think we're doing. I think we're doing pretty well. I think we're doing yeah. pretty well all around. So the last one is a wild card. So this is your opportunity to go wherever you want. Ooh. You can do whatever you want. Freedom and yeah. complication. Freedom and style. Freedom and everything. Oh, that's just. Fantastic. That's a bad idea. Giving Kevin no, ultimate I freedom. Don't. I don't know if this is a good idea. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Ooh, GP. Ooh. Cool brand. Yeah, very cool brand. Another situation where watches of Switzerland have dug deep into Europe and pulled something forward for the North American market, which is what their kind of you know thing is. That's what as collectors know them for these really remarkable brands. It's funny how some brands really burst on the scene in North America and mm -hmm. established themselves. The Rolex, Patek, AP, and then if you go over to Switzerland, you walk the streets of Geneva. GP's a big deal. Mm -hmm. It's a fantastic brand, very underrated. They were recently under the Caring Group structure with UN, but now are independent, which I think will serve well for them. And they make some very serious watches. I've always struggled with how... Laureato? It, well, my point is, does that look like the Royal Oak or what? Of course it does. Yeah. Of course So, it does. I mean, you know, it's, it's sort of an issue. Um, I, I respect why they would do that. The movement matters. But if you're going to go into um, something crazy, and I had my eye on this, I just want you to know, this tourbillon is insane. The Cosmos. Yeah. 
Okay. It's, it's an insane piece. Now we're not, uh, the price yeah. is going to be crazy. It's over $300,000. I know that, but it doesn't matter because I'm looking for something eclectic, as you said, something right off the charts. There's a timepiece that's got so much going on on it that it's going to be a conversation stopper, which I'm always looking for. I'm looking for something crazy. Um, is that going to be your pick? I'm moving up to it. Okay. I could be looking at other, you know, selections, but I knew this was here. It's a crazy watch. It's a crazy watch. And I want in my, you know, my collection something really off the charts. This is it. Let's pull it out. Okay. Let's look at it. All righty. And that is one crazy piece. That is a Re showstopper for these guys. $340,000, I yeah. think that one is. Yeah. It's large casing. It's 49 millimeters. And look at... Can handle it. I think he I, can handle it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this ego can handle anything. Yeah. Trust me. No, but it, it's such... You know, it's such a piece, and, and the- Look the, at the dome on that the, sapphire yeah, crystal, right? Yeah, yeah, this is why it's, and you know. It's pretty remarkable. So, and then also there's no traditional crown. So all of these little additional latches on the top are how you operate the function. So you have two of these glo uh, globes, uh, like spheres. One of them is going to be more traditional globe of the world, and you have these zodiac symbols, central hour hand. I mean, it's, and then you have a turbion yeah. as well. I mean, and very light, I mean, it's just, so, you know, you really, you have to respect the, the art of watchmaking and the art of designing a watch when you get something like this. So, I just felt if I'm going to go GP, let's go right up to the top quartile of what they offer. This is clearly, they're trying to make a statement. They, they want to go right outside of the box with this. You may pick the most expensive watch in this entire story. I don't it? think so. I think there's a couple of others yeah, okay. that, that could beat that. But that's, you know, it's up there. It's up there. So. All right, no, all right. And you know, it's not bejeweled. It's not covered in diamonds no, or rubies no. or anything. It's just pure watchmaking at its best. No, I have a difficult... You get, you get to go anywhere. You get to go anywhere, Teddy. I mean, that's the great thing about this. Should we go crazy? Let's see Nardine. This is certainly out there for my taste, but now I'm, I'm going that, head to head, so I, I need know, to pick but something. See, when you're uncertain about your decision, you're just trying to compete with Mr. Wonderful, that's when you make mistakes. He's about to do that right now. Let's go with... Marine Mega Yacht. Let's do this one. Also large. Flat, you have a tourbillon. You have that moon indication with a tide indicator. And then you have this unique power reserve indicator on the right of the crown side, which is unique for two different aspects. One is it has like an anchor, so it kind of shows the uh, gradual shift of time. And then it's right over the crown, which is difficult from a watchmaking perspective as well. So let's do that. And, and I think and, I'm in a similar and collectible, price. And collectible. I think I'm in the same price range too. So I think you are. It. I think it's going to be slightly less. 316. Three, 316. Yes. Okay. So I, I cut it a little bit. And what was, what was mine? You're 340, I believe. I rest my case, Your Honor. <laughs> because remember, I speak watch. The watches actually communicate with me. Pretty cool. And then also the Turbion has, it's, you know, because their marine collection has yeah. a little propeller. It's kind of cool. Yeah, that is very nice. All right, so that is five each. Let's get all these together. Let's tally up the totals, and then let's lay them all out for people at home, and then I get to decide what I want to do. Yeah, that's true, because he did win the coin toss. That's correct. And uh, somebody was talking a lot, a trash. <laughs> Look, so get prepared. These are extraordinary. We've got 10 extraordinary pieces. It's been a lot of fun to pick them, but now the rubber hits the road, so to speak. All right. Let's make it happen. All right, Kevin. So here's our recap. We have five watches each. Yeah. Grand Seiko High Beat, Calatrava, No Time to Die, Marine, Doxa Sub 200, Oris Big Crown Pointer Date, Roberto Clemente, Master Control Calendar Chronograph, GMT Master, Seamaster Diver 300, and then you have your GP Cosmos. Unfortunately, the die is cast. I just cleaned your clock. That's what happened. Well, wait a second. I still have the opportunity to swap out anything from your table with one oh, of my picks. Oh, bad news. That's because you won the coin toss? Yes, and I deferred. Oh. Unless you go first. Now, you did, I will give you credit. You didn't make it easy in any one category. I actually mm. don't feel completely so confident. So I get to make the swap? No, 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 no. I, I should be able to, really. I, I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think so. He was... Chatting her in a way, chatting away all game, talking a lot of smack. <laughs> you were really talking up this piece. Yes, and I, I was, was actually very impressed how you were able to identify this. I also don't like, even think about swapping those. You don't even deserve this piece. You don't even understand it, Teddy. I get a different this case is material. This way outside of your snack bracket. Different case material. 
I overpopulate you with gold now, oh. so you're so one-dimensional. <laughs> now I have variety of dial color, material. I don't know. I think I win. I'm going to take your Cosmos no, and you get so. my UN. No, listen. There's nothing wrong with this piece. It's one Absolutely of the classics not. in this store. I'm happy to make the swap. I have a lot of gold here because I am that kind of guy. I'm golden. And so <laughs> you can sit around with the steel. But remember, at the end of the day, it's the dial. And I think I've outchosen you on dial. I really do. I really do. It's tight. All right, well, let's. Well, this well, could be one of our tightest contests. You yet. give me some credit? No. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. This ego can't get any bigger. He's, every single time he wins, guys, he comes back, he talks more trash. We can't allow this anymore. I think I won. No. I came in with a vengeance. Absolutely I was ready for not. war today. This is not about watches, it's about winning, and I was going to win this gun. From beater to extreme, this is like a rainbow of picks. No, no, no. See, there's, there's almost a, a family here of watches that are all united and in sync together. There's nothing but chaos on the streets no, 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 in this no, collection. No, 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 no. Chaos on the streets. Absolutely not. Chaos. Total chaos. Let us know who won in the comments. Please. I think I won. Kevin doesn't think so. But guys, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon. Definitely check out Kevin's channel as well. We're going to shoot something for his channel. And we'll see you all next time. Get out of here. <laughs>